long ago, Michael Gambon, who played Albus Dumbledore in the Harry Potter series, passed away after a bout of pneumonia. Meanwhile, his iconic character of Dumbledore lived to the ripe old age of 150, and if he hadn't been tempted by the Resurrection Stone and avoided putting on that ring, who knows how much longer he would have lived. What causes the huge difference? Why is it that wizards who live in a technologically backward society without modern hospitals, antibiotics, or organ transplant surgeries live so long? Is it truly just magic, or is there more? As muggles, is there something we're missing that we could learn and potentially apply to our own lives? A way to extend those lives? And while you could chalk it up to, yeah dude, obviously it's magic, duh. I wasn't satisfied with that, and I went on a deep dive into the wizarding world to try and figure it out. I loved the Harry Potter series growing up. Who would come with me to Hogwarts? I would never see you because you would run away unless you were hungry. Yuna's like and subscribe. Have you? I honestly have no idea how many times I've read through Harry Potter, but I know I went through Philosopher's Stone at least 10 times, and the whole series at least 3 times. I am a huge nerd, I know, I embrace that, and maybe we can talk about today something a little bit different, and maybe learn how we could live a little bit longer with or without magic. Lumos! Bruh! Come on dude, really? Sometimes I just want to evade a cadaver my editor. Alright, so how long do wizards live? In all the times you might have read the books, you probably picked up on the fact that Dumbledore is old. But how old? It's actually a little contentious. At one point in an interview in 2001, Rowling had stated that Dumbledore is about 150 years old. But then Wikipedia says on her website, the birth month and year of Albus Dumbledore is actually August 19... Uh, 19? August 1881, which is the same as me. Month-wise, obviously, I wasn't born in 1881. Anyways, that date would make Dumbledore about 116 years old when he died. Big difference, but Wikipedia says it's true, so it's true, right? No. My deep dive journey down this particular rabbit hole would be too long to go down for. But the website that Wikipedia references is a website that honestly looks like it was made by some college freshman in a computer class. It's not Pottermore or any other official site that's affiliated with Rowling. Since Rowling by word of mouth said 150, we're gonna go with 150. And now back on the subject. If not for Dumbledore's foray with the ring, he was honestly as spry as a spring chicken and could have lived for much longer for all we knew. After all, look what he was doing. He was running a school, he was leading the International Confederation of Wizards as Supreme Mugwug, and he was dueling Voldy to a standstill like a few years prior. So then, what is the average life expectancy for a wizard? Well, searching all around the internet, average age for a wizard in Harry Potter is 137. That's what's bandied about. But nowhere is it stated by the books or Rowling, which again, we have stated that as the author must be taken as gospel. So is this a fair age to use? Well, though Rowling doesn't explicitly state the average age of wizards anywhere, we can use characters in the books as examples to see that maybe it's not 137, but it must be a very long time. The series presents characters who have a significantly longer life expectancy compared to the average human life expectancy. One being Rosilda Marchbanks, uh, which, who was brought up in the Order of the Phoenix book, came on as a proctor for the OWLS exams that Harry took. Now, she was old, with a capital O. How old is not explicitly stated, but she said that she saw over Dumbledore's OWLs when he was a kid, 15, and that's 150 year old Dumbledore, meaning that she was at least an adult when he was 15. Meanwhile, her comment about Dumbledore using a wand in ways she had never seen before hints that she might have been much older than Dumbledore when she officiated over his exam. We really don't know for sure, and recognize that at the time of the book she was working at the same job. It really makes you wonder how useful is retiring, but we'll touch more on that later. Another prime example in the books and movies is the age of Ormando Dippet. He was the headmaster, if you don't remember, of Hogwarts before Dumbledore. His age is 1637, as seen in The Evening Prophet in the Chamber of Secrets, and he was still alive in 1992. That would mean that his death was somewhere between 1992 or 1995, because a little bit later in Order of the Phoenix, he's a portrait, and he's complaining about some nonsense that Phineas Nagilis is saying about, you know, whatever nonsense Phineas Nagilis says. 
demonstrating that he had an incredibly long life. 1632 to 1992, that would be about 355 years. So maybe that 137 year old life expectancy that's bandied about the internet is maybe undershooting it a little bit. Meanwhile, you look at the life expectancy in the United States of 77 years on average, and Britain not really that far ahead, uh, 81 years on average. That's not even close to wizard time. Now, our longest living verified human was a French woman, Jeanne Calmet. This was at 122 years old. The oldest verified man was Jiroman Kimura of Japan, 116 years old. Now, it doesn't explicitly say anywhere in the books why wizards live so much longer than us ordinary muggles, but that's okay. It means we can have some fun, explore, and theorize. I've come up with some reasons how and why wizards can live so long based on information gleaned from the books and human physiology. First of all, we know that wizards can be born from non-wizarding families as well as intermingling from muggles and that must mean that wizards are physiologically human as a basis. Having magical ability certainly has to be connected with genetics and given the variance in magical talent that we've seen throughout the series and the limited number of squibs, it's likely multiple genes complex in their interactions. I think it would be fun to make a future video more into the theories on how magic is inherited based on the books and science. Comment if you'd like to see that. Back to the subject though, it's safe to say that whatever mechanisms that wizards utilize to live longer have their basis in our own physiology, and magic influences them. So how does human aging work? Alright, so aging typically involves a complex interplay of factors, but these can simply be broken down into three subsections. You have genetic factors, environmental factors, and epigenetic factors. Genetic influences on aging are manifold, and they range from the longevity of how long your relatives live to how efficiently does your body handle cellular division and repair. As we grow older, our cells divide, and over time, they become less efficient at this process. You can think of each cell a little bit like a factory with aging workers. Eventually, they can no longer function, and they need to retire. This loss in efficacy is primarily due to what we call copy fatigue. Every time your cells divide, your DNA gets cut at the end, and it loses small portions of these ends every single time. This leads to a loss of DNA over time, worse copies, so on and so forth. Cells combat this phenomenon by using telomeres. These are essentially caps or hats at the end of DNA sequences that protect core genetic information from getting uh, what amounts to a haircut. There is a significant amount of research ongoing that's focused on expanding and replenishing tel telomere length to extend lifespan. The success of this research? Debatable. Now, environmental factors that influence aging include toxic exposures. This includes things such as smoking, working with toxic materials, radiation exposure, excessive drinking, etc. And our dietary habits could arguably can be considered a form of toxic exposure. Have you seen the stuff that they put in McDonald's hamburgers? Look it up, please. Please do. Okay, so moving on from that, what about epigenetic factors? What are epigenetic factors? Well, epigenetics basically comprises of the interaction between genetic factors and environmental factors. And what comes out of the combination of those things? For instance, when exposed to unhealthy environmental factors like poor nutrition, smoking, Dormant genes are maybe activated, and these genes generally cause issues such as hormonal inflammation. This leads to accelerated telomere shortening or compromised cellular repair. These both lead to earlier death. So with this knowledge in mind, how might wizards live longer then? Well, let's theorize. While wizards are technologically behind, healing in Harry Potter is overpowered. Healing is just way better than modern medicine. Remember in Chamber, Harry loses all the bones in his arms due to Lockhart, and Pomfrey just regrows these bones in a night. If that happened to you in real life, basically all I could say is, sorry, that sucks. Y you only have one good arm left. Don't let Lockhart get near it. But not so in the wizarding world. No matter what problem you have, nearly possessed and killed by Lord Voldemort, just go to the hospital wing and see Pomfrey. Get petrified by a snake, Pomfrey, Nearly kissed by a Dementor? Pomfrey! Anyways, Hogwarts has one witch that can take any problem and cure it all. One witch for an entire school of wizarding children and teachers. Obviously, Pomfrey could ask for help, but I challenge you to find a time anywhere in the books where Pomfrey goes and asks the hospital St. Mungo's for anything. I really couldn't. 
Meanwhile, in the real world, if you get admitted to the hospital, sometimes it seems like you get a consult for every organ in your body because nobody really knows what to do. Well, you got some lungs? Well, we got a pulmonologist for that. You got a heart? Well, we got a cardiologist for that. Okay, now one place she does get help is potions from Snape. But yeah, it really seems like between Snape and Pomfrey, the whole of Hogwarts literally needs no one else. When healthcare is needed, magic is way above anything we currently have. Except giving you chocolate for being around a Dementor. Actually, no, I can't order that in the hospital, but I, I could sneak some in for you. I've never seen Pomfrey ask for an insurance card either. Alright, another theory. Wizarding bodies are way more resilient. Now, healing's OP, but that's likely not the only thing. Harry, at the age of 13, if you remember, fell off a broom during his Quidditch match. It was over 100 feet per Fred and George, and in the movie, honestly, it really looked like way more. Uh, but anyways, a proximal terminal velocity of a 100 foot fall is over 50 miles an hour. Dumbledore did slow him down with what looked like resto momentum, but honestly, it didn't look like he was slowed down much at all. Either way, Harry got up the next day right as rain. Pomfrey. Now, unless they're cursed or jinxed or falling from great heights, we rarely see wizards get sick. No one ever gets diagnosed or dies from cancer for what we know, despite what we've seen and read about multiple wizards going around smoking. So how is it that no one's gotten cancer? Well, it's likely a magically bolstered immune system, and the system in our bodies that fights against infections and malignancies alike. Or maybe they can just magic cancer away when it's detected. And it's so rudimentary that they don't even mention it in the books or anywhere else. What would that spell be like? Evanesco cancer, I guess? Anyways, remember telomeres? Those caps protecting our DNA from getting a haircut? It's likely that wizards have longer telomeres, and magic is better able to repair and or extend those telomeres. In us muggles, our germ cells, this would be sperm or egg cells, have an enzyme called telomerase. It, that can do this, but it goes silent on reproductive cells. Likely, the reason for this in muggles is manifold, but it's harder for normal cells to become cancerous if telomerase is inhibited. Cancer happens when our cells somewhere in our body start mu to mutate, and then they start dividing like crazy, and basically try to go lower Voldemort on the rest of the body. But just like with Voldemort splitting himself into horcruxes, this has a toll. There's a price to pay for all that division. These cancer cells often kill themselves or make it easier for the rest of the body to kill them by dividing so many times. Without telomerase, they can't protect the ends of their DNA. Those cancer cells are just dividing and cutting off DNA and basically making those cancer cells way less efficient and way easier to be killed. If they did have telomerase, that would make them a lot harder to stop. But wizards don't seem to get cancer and they also live a long time. I would bet you anything or more that their cells have access to telomerase, way more than just their germ cells. And because of that, they can extend their telomeres much longer. Along with that, their bodies naturally have better immune systems and any errors in cellular divisions are just fixed. If not, they probably just have magical cures that prevent these errors or just vanish cancer away as easy as Evanesco. Again, obviously the Harry Potter series never explicitly states this, but notably in the Dresden Files, another excellent fantasy series that follows a different Harry, Harry Dresden, they do talk about this in a lot more detail in Book 7, Deadbeat. And honestly, Dresden Files, great series, recommend you check it out. They're, it's 18 books and going strong, so if you want more magic and more action, that's a great place to go to. All right, so wizards may be technologically behind, but wizarding healthcare, way beyond anything that we have. And on top of that, wizards also likely have a naturally bolstered immune system by magic and healing abilities we just can't compare to. And thus, they're able to extend their lives way past us normal humans. But is there anything for us to learn from all of this in order for us as normal human beings to live longer? I definitely think so. Why we may not have magic to bolster our immune system and healing abilities? I'm still waiting on my hardcore slider. I'm not giving up. We can still naturally take steps to bolster our own immune system and lengthen our own survival. Though we're likely never going to get to 300 years, there's absolutely no reason you or I couldn't live to 100. Or longer. We mentioned epigenetic factors, environmental factors, and genetic factors that all contribute. And it's majorly the epigenetic factors that I'd really like to dive into. If you explore the lives of the longest humans, these great centurions that we talked about earlier, you're going to find several obvious patterns that you could replicate to live longer. If you study these folks, a notable thing is they're all highly habitual. 
They have routines that always included some level of daily physical fitness, especially when they're younger, but into their old age as well. They knew the importance of moving. Now, as they age, they obviously did not keep to an extensive fitness routine like chasing around horcruxes or dueling Lord Voldemort, but they kept some level of physical fitness even into their centurion years. Jean Calmet biked to the age of 100, for example, and her nurses said she was moving like a spring chicken, kind of similarly to Dumbledore that we talked about a little bit earlier, outpacing people that were 30 years younger than her at the age of 120. Now, I want to and I have to touch on diet. It's a tough subject because it's not that in our world that there isn't healthy foods to eat that can help you live longer, but because unhealthy foods are so much more tempting and are much better marketed more than anything. But if you want to live longer, the simplest thing I can say is avoid processed foods. If it has a food label and a bunch of chemicals that on the label that you just don't understand, it's probably not healthy for you. I mean, what the hell is Red 5 anyways? Instead, eat more fruits and vegetables every day. This part is not rocket science, but it does require good habits to keep going. That's the hardest part, is instilling the habits. Now start small by putting out processed food in one meal or snack a day with unprocessed replacements like fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. From there, you can expand on a day-by-day -day basis and just rocket your health into another stratosphere compared to most average people. Now, Another big thing that Centurions recognize is the importance of social connections. As we age, it's easy to lose those social connections. Centurions don't. They prioritize them. These connections give them reasons to wake up in the morning and live longer. Wizards similarly have figured this out. Again, notice how everyone in the wizarding world seems to be working a lot longer. And this may be because retirement's not really a thing. I mean, I've never heard Dumbledore talk about his Hogwarts 401k or his Fidelity IRA account, but retirement might not be a thing because they've recognized that it's important to live longer. Anyways, it's not that I'm saying you should never retire. I just definitely think that you should keep some form of work long-term that you can enjoy for the rest of your life and give you meaning because that will keep you alive longer. All right, this was a fun video to make and I hope you enjoyed it as well. As always, consider liking and subscribing for more content. Thank you.